Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Kat, let's get into it. Not too long ago, I made a video called 100 video ideas for art YouTubers. And long story short, it kind of took off. I guess what that made me realize is that there was a lack of YouTube advice specifically for people in the art niche. So if you just started an art channel or you're about to start an art channel, here's my advice on how you should start. If you don't know what kind of content you want to be making, my advice to you is to at least be aware of the different niches that are out there. And to do your research, I'm going to assign you probably the most fun homework you've ever gotten, which is to just watch tons of art YouTubers. Sooner or later, you'll get a hang of what niches and what spaces each of them occupy. I will list some for you now. There are the studio vloggers. There are the art student vloggers. There are people who post just their art and speed paints. There are the bullet journalers. There are the animators and the animatic makers. There are the tutorial makers. There are the lifestyle art YouTubers. There are the video essay commentary art YouTubers. There are the art challenge clickbait art YouTubers. And many, 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 many more. Starting out, there's a very slim chance you're actually gonna know what niche you're going to occupy. What you gain from being aware of those niches, however, is you know those audiences. You know the big players, the most popular creators in those niches. Think catnip for studio vlogs or Ah, or Proko for the tutorial side. You know what kinds of videos are popular and evergreen and what kind of videos are trendy and what style of videos audiences respond to. Unless you for sure only want to make one kind of video, I would not recommend boxing yourself in too quickly and too severely. We are aware of niches and we occupy them to some extent for knowledge of different audiences and for inspiration when we need video ideas. Be aware of how much you're copying because nine times out of 10, someone's gonna rather watch the original than the remake and you are the remake. We use niches as a tool and not as a box because they're always changing and always evolving and if you're aware of what's already out there, it'll give you a springing board on where to start off. Next is video presence. For my videos, even if it's just a speed paint, I like to start and end the video with my face. I'm very comfortable in front of a camera. I'm very comfortable speaking publicly or in film, but you may not be, and that is okay. If you aren't confident showing your face, there are tons and tons and tons of art YouTubers that just do a voiceover. You've probably seen artists that do voiceover sometimes have a little sprite or character of themselves that they show when they're doing a voiceover because it kind of gives that sense of talking to a face. Maybe for some of you, at least starting out, you are not even comfortable doing a voiceover. That is also okay. I've recently stumbled upon a sub niche of bullet journaling YouTube where there isn't even any voiceover. It's just calming music and then subtitles, narrating the video, telling us about the different products they're using. And it is so calming. Maybe you can start with a voiceover and lead into a face reveal, or maybe you can start with subtitles and then lead into a voiceover once you're comfortable. I'm gonna keep nailing this in over and over and over again throughout this whole video. The best thing you can do for yourself is start. Look at my backdrop right now. I'm in my brother's room because it's the only room in my house that has good lighting. I'm filming on my phone. I'm sitting on a box because that's the only thing that will put me at eye level. You probably already have ideas for videos to make. And if you don't have ideas for videos to make, I have a hundred of them right there. Basically, you control your style of video making. You don't have to use a voiceover or a face talking video if that's not what you're comfortable with, even if that's what everyone's doing in the niche. Even if that's what everyone's doing, you not doing that could even set you apart. You make videos how you want to and how it makes you comfortable. The next thing to be aware of, similar to the niche, you don't need to box yourself in right away, but be aware of it. Start experimenting, seeing how you feel about different vibes. I have my outline here and I said, find a better word to describe this than vibe. And I can't. So we're gonna talk about vibes. Even if the video doesn't have the artist speaking or showing themselves, chances are the video has a personality. 
and I don't think you should decide on a vibe to have in your videos and stick to it. I honestly think if you just start making videos by your third, fourth, fifth maybe even, you'll get an idea on what kind of videos you make. Are you energetic and brassy and bold and in your face with punchy music and edits? Are you productive, motivational, inspirational? Do you make chill, calm videos with cute music in the background and aesthetic shots of your life? Or is your video style super chill to the point where it's nearly ASMR? <sighs> ASMR stationary unboxing. Just hits different. Again, just start, try it out, but keep it in mind what kind of vibes you're going for and that could help also figure out what kind of niche you wanna occupy. Speaking of vibes, let's talk about music. Music practically determines the vibe of a video. One video clip with two different songs behind it has completely different feelings and connotations to it. Years ago, the most popular kind of backing music was EDM kind of electronic music. Um, for a while, it's been lo-fi, has been dominating the mute background music industry, I guess you could say. Now I've actually noticed a uh, shifting in trends and I've seen a lot of artists that I follow switch to classical, piano, maybe even jazzy music. What kind of music are you drawn to? I could never put electronic EDM music behind my speed paints because I hate that music. So those are not my vibes. I like lo-fi, but I also think I'd like some classical chill music because although I'm really loud, I like to be chill. <laughs> Starting out, even though you're not monetized, make sure you're using copyright free music. So important. You can look for it on SoundCloud. There's tons of channels on YouTube that share copyright free music. But what you need to do and what you need to remember to do is put the credits to the artist in the description box before you post. Not only is it just common courtesy to these smaller artists putting out their music for free for you to use, in most cases, it is required. <laughs> Okay, oh, the box is breaking. <laughs> Let's talk about equipment. If you have a good microphone lying around, which some of you might, especially if you're a gamer, I am not, you might have a good quality microphone, which great, awesome, fantastic. Use it for voiceovers, for your speed paints. If you're like me, just use your phone. How to make a phone microphone sound better. Make sure it's not too close to you. I usually put it like about an arm's length away because otherwise it just gets super maxed out and awful sounding. Um, I like to prop it up in my closet so it's kind of facing fabric. You could use, you could put yourself in front of curtains um, or pillows or something to kind of absorb the sound. It works for me. When you're in your editing program, editing the clips and the audio, Make sure your audio gain or volume is high enough because usually, especially if you're recording on your phone, the volume is not it. I like to raise it as high as I can without it maxing out and going into the red zone. Um, I'm still learning. I'm, that's just what works for me because if not and you upload it, it may sound okay, but then once you're in the YouTube app and you're listening to it, it's very clear to realize that you can't hear anything you're saying. And a little hack when you're editing the volume of your background music, especially if there's talking over it, um, go quieter than you think you need. I've checked out a couple art channels from people who have followed me from that video. Um, and if you do this, it'll just brand you as a very amateur and very beginner. When you click on a speed paint or something and the voiceover is way too quiet and the Background music is way too loud and it's just, it's not pleasant to listen to, it's not pleasant to watch. Most people are gonna click out as soon as they hear that pop up. So just take your background music, put it lower, lower than you think, lower than that. I've gotten this question a lot, so I figured I might as well answer it here. The program I use to record my screen is OBS Recorder. It is free. It works great. I would just watch a YouTube tutorial or something on just how to set it up for your, your computer. Um, 
and once you set it up, it's golden, it's good to go. I have zero complaints. My next recommendation for art YouTubers starting out is to take your time editing. Learn how to use your editing program, whether it's iMovie or Premiere or even whatever free uh, video editing software Windows has now. I use Premiere because I get Adobe with my school. And if you're in the mindset of starting out, you might not think that editing is what you should be focusing on. Um, you might be thinking, oh, I'm just starting out. I'm just trying to get videos out. Maybe I need to get a better camera and then my videos will look better. Not true. If you don't have a good quality camera for filming things or even filming your traditional art or bullet journal spreads or whatever, just use your phone. It will be okay. I promise you, you do not need to invest in a camera right away. I've been doing YouTube for a couple months now and I still haven't gotten a new camera. You do not need to improve your audio quality or your video quality for your videos to improve in quality. Aesthetic editing can make even the shittiest video in the world look good. So if you're just starting out, your voiceover isn't great quality, maybe your art isn't super good quality, maybe you're not quite where you want to be in terms of your art skills, but you want to start your YouTube channel anyway, good for you, correct choice. Take the time, watch tutorials on how to do aesthetic editing. If there's an effect or a framing or a filter that you want to learn how to use, Learn it, take the time, cause not too many beginner art YouTubers are doing this. I've watched videos with, to be fair, not good quality art, but amazing editing and it was so aesthetic and cozy and it's the actual art that was being drawn was not great. The voiceover quality was not great. Um, the, 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 the confidence of the person doing the voiceover, not great. But I watched it because it was cozy and cute and aesthetic and warm and there was cute jazzy music in the background. If you learn how to edit aesthetically, it will give you a leg up over all these other people who are starting at the same time as you. I can promise you, I can guarantee that. There's cutting and trimming the boring parts of your video or the spaces in your speech, but there's also editing to music color grading, adding borders, adding text, adding doodle effects, adding zooms and pans. You guys really seem to like these art YouTube advice videos. So if that, if you wanna see a video on how I edit my videos or you have questions on any other sort of YouTube related things, be sure to leave me a comment or shoot me a DM at Miss Katarina T. To be real with you for a second, the best thing about being so small still, I have, I have the time to answer all of, all of your questions and all of your comments and really connect with you. I've connected with a lot of you so far through Instagram DMs and it's just so cool. People know me and people want to go look for my art or ask me for advice, which I'm in the position to give. Why can't I freaking speak? If you need any advice on your art channel or your art, or if you know me from my portfolio advice video and you're working on a portfolio, I've answered a couple of your questions already through Instagram, looked at a couple of your stuff. You guys are so talented. <laughs> Or even just to say hi, I wanna to get to know all you new lovely people and if you need advice on anything or any help with art or YouTube or portfolios, <laughs> shoot me a DM at Miss Katarina T. I'd love to get to know you. And I touched on this briefly, but I'm gonna say it again. Just start. You're not gonna know what kind of videos you wanna be making until you start making them. I didn't think I'd enjoy doing advice videos, but here I am, I love it. I thought I'd really like doing bullet journal videos, but I don't, not really. I've gotten a couple DMs from people starting out their channels, just talking about, oh, I only have 10 followers, or I made a video and I lost two followers. I, like, I, I'm, I've been working for this long and I only have this many followers. Here's a real piece of advice. Don't follow your numbers too closely, especially just in the beginning. Your focus needs to be, your focus needs to be making content and making and trying new things, trying out any kind of video idea or niche or concept or vibe that even remotely interests you, you should try because now is the time. Now that there's not too many eyes on you, you have all the freedom in the world to try anything you want. And a lot of you are probably young, 
which means you have all the time in the world to make all these videos you want. This video is already so long, I don't really have time to get into the YouTube algorithm and how to make it work for you. So, so if you're struggling with figuring out and that's a video you wanna see, please leave a comment so I know to make it because otherwise I will not. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Hope you got something out of it. If you want to see what kind of art I make, feel free to follow me at Miss Katarina T. If you haven't checked out the 100 ideas for art YouTubers video, it'll be here with another one that you might like. Thank you all for being with me so far. I love you all so, so much. And I will see you next Monday. Oh my God.